Hi, I'm Natalie and today we're making a gluten-free strawberry rhubarb pie, which is my favorite pie. Like, there's no pie like strawberry rhubarb pie. And I know I have been ranting about in my pumpkin pie video about how can a vegetable be in a pie. Rhubarb though is an exception. Somehow that combination between strawberry and rhubarb just is so complementary. And if you add a little bit of cinnamon and lemon to it, it's this perfect spring pie thing. Just to tell you how dedicated I am to strawberry rhubarb pie. I did go on a hike with a friend of mine, which was like 10, 12 miles. So we're talking about almost 20 kilometers and our feet were sore, but I saw there was a farm store. And in a farm store in the States, you can get on times the most best delicious pies ever. So I convinced her to walk another four kilometers back and forward to find this farm store. Unfortunately, there was no pies. It was a very sad moment in my life. But yes, the hope, the glance to find a strawberry rupa pie made me walk four more kilometers and convince my friends to do the same syllabus. So yes, it is a very tempting pie and it's definitely something you should try out if you haven't made it yet. And this gluten-free strawberry rhubarb pie is so flaky and so delicious that it will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. In today's show, I'm going to make my strawberry rhubarb pies with fresh strawberries. And if you'd like to learn more about gluten-free baked deliciousness, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I have a book out. It is on Kindle Unlimited. And so it's free if you have that subscription and it's called gluten-free sugar gazel. Let's get back to the recipe. And yes, you have to treat fruits differently in a gluten-free pie than in a regular glutinous pie. Now in gluten-free pie, if you don't cook in your fruits beforehand and thicken up the juices, you get very sort of a soggy pie result. Let's get started with the fresh strawberries and how you would treat fresh strawberries. The first thing you have to do with the strawberries is certainly cut off their stem. In this case, the strawberries are pretty much equal size, so I don't have to half them. But if you have very big and very small strawberries, what I like to do is half them, just to make sure you have sort of equal sizes of strawberries. For this strawberry is a little bit big, so I'm gonna quick split it. The next thing I have to prep is the rhubarb. Whoa. And that's really thick and nice rhubarb. It is from our neighbor's garden. So what I want to do with this rhubarb is I want to split it and cut it in about one inch to two centimeter slices. I'm going to even split this rhubarb one more time because it's really big. You don't want it really to be more than two centimeters in either dimension. Okay, all my rhubarb is chopped and I'm going to put it to the side. So let's get back to the strawberries because I have to take a few more steps to prep them for my strawberry rhubarb pie. And I'm going to add to it 150 grams of white sugar and 50 grams of brown sugar. The brown sugar adding a little bit of this really nice caramelized flavor to it and let it sit for 30 minutes. And what happens is that the strawberries start to weep. And what that really means is the strawberry are starting to release their water content. I'm just going to quick steer the sugar and the strawberries so they're well combined and let them sit now for 30 minutes. Here are my wet strawberries and how you can see here the sugar has drawn out the liquid from the strawberries and I want to strain my strawberries now and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch or potato starch and I'm going to quick toss the strawberries in the cornstarch so we're going to go back to our rhubarb. I'm going to heat it up again. I'm going to add the syrup. I'm going to add now two tablespoons of cornstarch. And I'm going to heat up the rhubarb and the cornstarch on a low heat on the stove. You see also how thick it gets, so I'm going to add a little bit of water. So this is what happens when you put in the cornstarch too early. You see that the rhubarb juices are already thickening up while Technically, the rhubarb is not cooked yet. I'm going to cover the rhubarb just to make sure it steams a little bit and can cook in a bit. So I'm going to check again on the rhubarb. You can feel also now how it gets a little bit softer. So the rhubarb now is much softer, but it's not broken down yet. So that's good. So I'm going to use now a different pot 
I'm going to add my strawberries to it. And I just want to quick heat up the strawberries and get the cornstarch to thicken up. Add the rhubarb and take it off the stove. If the strawberry and the juice don't thicken up at boiling temperature, then probably I have not added enough cornstarch, which is the case here. So I'm going to add some more. So here would be the cornstarch. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. And then I would mix it up with a spoon. So you know there's zero clumps in it. And I've added back the strawberries. When you heat up cornstarch in a liquid, it just thickens it up. So that's what you use a lot in sauces. The other thing what you want to do now is be very careful. You want to keep on stirring to mix the strawberry and the cornstarch. But if you do that too forcefully, you're going to break down the membranes of the strawberries. And you're going to pretty much squash them. So you don't want to do that. I'm going to add now my pre-cooked rhubarb to my strawberries. You just want to heat it up that the cornstarch can do its chemical thingy. And you can see now full strawberries and full rhubarb still. And that's exactly what I was looking for. I'm going to add now the zest of one lemon to it. I like to add one tablespoon of vanilla extract and a little bit of brown cinnamon, about a quarter teaspoon. And then I mix it. And again, I'm going to do that very carefully because I still want the full strawberries and the full rhubarb pieces. So here's my strawberry rhubarb filling. So here's my finished pie crust. I did it yesterday night. And today I'm going to roll it out and finish up with that my strawberry rhubarb pie. To make my pie crust, I'm going to split the pie dough. I'm going to roll it out. And I'm going to put the pie pan upside down and then just flip the pie crust into it. So I'm going to put my hand underneath it. My one hand touches my other hand through the parchment paper. I flip it and pull off now the parchment paper. And again, if I quick have to fill in some of the gaps, I try to do it really fast so I don't touch the dough too much. And I'm going to cut certainly with a sharp knife the edges. And I like the edge to be a little bit thicker. Okay, so here's your pie crust. Here is my strawberry filling. And I put a filling into the pie crust. It's gonna be a nice strawberry rhubarb pie. And I have to finish my pie now with closing it up. And I was thinking... And I have some really pretty cookie cutters. And I'm gonna use that to cut up some shapes and cover the pie with it. So for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll out my pie dough and use my cookie cutters to cut out some forms. And now I'm gonna put the cut out forms in a random pattern on the top of the pie. So this is my strawberry rhubarb pie. The only thing left before I can put the pie in the oven is, is covering it with a pie sheet. And I think I'm gonna make my own. So here's what I have to do to make my own pie shield. I need to rip a piece of aluminum, which will cover the entire pie. And then what I do is I fold it, fold it one more time. So I'm gonna line out the aluminum foil with the pie form, and I'm gonna estimate how much of the aluminum foil I have to cut out, so it exposes the center of the pie. And I'm gonna cut the edges of the aluminum foil as well, just to make it a little bit cleaner. And then I'm going to unfold the aluminum foil. And now I'm just going to cover the edge. In case you want to get it a little bit closer, you can also carefully cut into the foil. And here is the pie shield. The only thing left to do is put the pie into the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 170 degrees Celsius, and bake it for about an hour. And here is the finished strawberry rhubarb pie I was waiting for for entire winter. And I can't show you that, but we pretty much devoured it over the barbecue and I added and made also some strawberry heavy whipped cream for the topping. Oh, it was so good. I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye.